I sing here. Jarring, jarring. Jarring some more? Second. So we're going to be having a look over this dead beehive. Um, unfortunately, when you have livestock, you can also have dead stock, and sometimes you miss a thing and uh, you make a mistake or uh, misfortunate events happen and things die. I've completely eaten everything in this hive, um, and they've got nothing left. And unfortunately, um, they've died. You could see them all trying to get into the cells to ha to get some food to find some food. Um, but there's nothing there. There is some, there was a, a frame of honey in this beehive but because it's so cold, they're stuck in that spot. There's no food there, so they die. This is how bees work. So I'm just editing my uh, bee videos just now uh, from the year 2020 and uh, it's interesting. I'm finding that it doesn't quite portray the reality um, of what happened. So I thought I would record this little video to add in. Um, essentially, you see me at one point um, in early 2020 cleaning out a dead beehive. Um, but what I didn't record, I think this is just because it's really sad and really hard, is that I lost almost all of eight hives. Um, essentially, having I went into winter having nine, actually I think it was ten, ten um, strong, fantastic hives the promise was great for expanding at you know if you look at the beginnings of my journey i had one lousy little hive and i've grew over the years to have 10 um, and bearing in mind you'll find story after story of people on the internet going from one to like you know 30 in one year and um you know i just haven't had those successes i've learned a lot but i haven't had those successes um, so what I had this, um, you know, the, the winter from 2019 to 2020, that winter is pretty much every beehive died. Um, and I didn't know what caused it. It just, there was hardly any bees in the hives in spring when they were all full. Um, and, um, you know, although there was maybe one that starved, um, most of them had uh, a lot of food left. Um, and it was just unknown. So I actually sent off samples um, because I wanted to know what was causing, uh, what you know, what my problem was. And those samples came back clean. You know, no, um, they, you know, they didn't say they had levels of uh, nosema or anything. Um, and the only thing in the sample that came back um, was suggesting um, that uh, it could have been a, a varroa issue. Um, so I have since learned that Ipilife var um, needs a high temperature um, in order to be effective. Uh, and the bee inspector for Scotland has, has since told me he just finds it's a very ineffective way to treat varroa. And lots of people have varroa issues after using it. So um, for me, that's, that was my, that was my go-to. I used that to treat all of my highs quite late in the season as well. It was maybe August, which is quite cold in Scotland. Um, and the temperatures just weren't high enough for it to be effective. And the treatment itself is not the most effective thing for Varroa. Um, so you'll, you'll, you, you know, um, I've learned a hard lesson. This year um, has been fantastic. And you'll see that in the video, that actually, although it's dire, although it was very painful start to the year, um, I purchased two nucks off friends um, just to bolster my stock levels, uh, introduce some new um, genetics, and I took it from there. And you'll see that by the end of the season um, that there's oodles and oodles um, of, of, of bees, which is just fantastic. Let's brush these bees off. That's what I do is just give it a bash. Are you a bit sad, Gideon? It's a bit sad. Daddy's a bit sad too. Every every high of loss is, is sad. But having said that, it's an experience and we make sure that every time this happens, we learn from it. So um, I'm just making um, protein patties this morning out of um, these things. Uh, this is Bipro, um, which I've ordered for B, from B Equipment. Um, and just like um, actually Stuart off of Norfolk Honey, um, so if you'd like to actually make the recipe, I'll, I'll leave a link in the um, uh, in the information. You can follow that. Um, but essentially, 
this is how mine's turned up. So the, the recipe is literally just um, a litre of uh, warm water mixed in with uh, two kilograms of sugar. Um, and then you measure it out into litre batches. And in each litre batch, you put 600 um, grams of the protein substitute powder. Um, the powder looks like, like that. Um, and then when you mix it, it looks like that. Um, leave it overnight um, and then you squish it between um, either um, baking paper or um, cling film um, and then you end up with a, a patty that you can put on top of the hive. Great, so this is the next day, um, looking at these protein patties um, and it's actually quite a, it's quite a firm texture. Um, the risk is if you make it too runny it drips down onto the bees um, and makes them cold, wet and can actually kill them. Um, so uh, you really want to have it soft that they can chew it and get into it um, but uh, you know not not rock solid but firm that it doesn't melt and drip all over them. This is my paint house you can see these are um, the bee boxes that I'm painting yellow. I'm actually using quite a strong gloss um, just because these these this equipment really some people would probably decommission and put in the bin but um, if I can get a few more seasons out of it you can see that the, the joints of them are not you know they're probably homemade by some old time beekeeper I get them second hand sterilize them paint them if I can get a couple of seasons out of them then they've they've done their done their job um, you know each each of these supers if that is you know filled with honey um, then actually ec economics wise that's earned me a lot of money and um, well worth the lick of paint um, you know some of these things that you know this is um, I've actually patched this with a, a wood filler because the, the corner had completely rotted away and um, so you know you just shove wood filler on slap some paint over um, and, and it'll do a couple of seasons um, so it's well worth making sure brood boxes are really strong and only you know taking on old equipment if, if you if you're going to be confident it's not going to break so I've actually chosen this brood box out here um, you know, just looking at it looks fine, doesn't it? You know, like a paint, it'd be great. But actually, you can see, if you can hear that, you know, it's just crumbling away here at the corner. It's just, it's just dust in there. You know, if I was to, if I was to to, to put bees in that, um, then it's just gonna break open on route and be a nasty accident. It's me just out in the bees, just feeding the um, uh, the protein patties that I made made a couple of days ago. Um, so it's actually a cold day today. It's only five degrees, but just fed one, um, fed this one here, and they didn't even bother, no flapping around. Um, so actually, you, I probably had a lid off five seconds max, um, and placed it on, and not a single bee took flight. I'm actually thinking maybe that's better than interrupting them on a nine degree day when you know half of them take flight and they get all aggressive and stressed um you know having a smoker on on me would have been good give us a gentle shake these bees back down i'm going to pop the lid back on time got a smoker i'm going to come back to this one um, and hopefully they'll, they'll disappear down the hole because it's cold. Too much paint, yeah, you scrape it off the edge. What did you say about loving painting? I love paint. painting. You love painting beehives? Yeah. I love spending time with you. Why did you choose to come outside? Because I love you. Oh, that's kind. Have a kiss. Well, um, first proper sunny, warm day, 14 degrees. Um, 15 degrees is kind of the mark that you aim for for going into a hive. I'm gonna push it just now and have a wee look. It's only a degree less and the bees are flying. We also got some uh, some more protein patties made up. So um, we'll see if any need replaced. I suspect they probably haven't touched them, but we'll see. One reason why it's always worth having a look, brushing bees away. And that dead thing right there is the queen. 
See the legs are different, the bum is different. Um, so that is a dead queen right there. Not long died. So we will have a look in this hive now and see what we find. Not good. Absolutely no queen in here, disappointingly. Um, dwindling population of bees in what is normally my biggest hive. Um, I have got no other national hive here. Um, I did have another one, but it's died this winter too, so... Um, a little bit lost for what to do with this one, I must admit. I think giving it a frame of eggs is, is its only choice. Um, so I will open up another hive and see if I can find a frame of eggs. This really is what you want to see. Uh, hard to show you, but there is eggs. Eggs at the bottom of these cells. Not 100% sure if you can see that or not, but there are eggs. And yellow pollen on the bees. I haven't seen Queenie, but I'm not going to bother Queenie. Um, I can see lots of brood in there. Drone brood at the top and eggs at the bottom, which is good. There's Queenie winding her way around. On this one, with an egg popping out her bum. Not that hard to find her because there's only two flipping frames. Tiny little bunch of bees. I mean, really what I should be doing is combining these, these bees with that bees over there. In fact, I think that's what I'll do somehow. Work out a way of doing it. But, um, you know, lovely laying queen. I am going to catch her. So this is the nervous part of beekeeping, because I'm going to have to take these big thick gloves off and reach for her. Hoping the temperament of these bees are good, but at the end of the day, you can get stung doing this. That's just how it is. Right, there she is there. Yep. Just need to peel her back. There you go. And she's in my hand. There she is. What got her in here? Right, so I'm going to mark this queen, so I'll, I'll just pop the camera down so I have two because you can squish her against this. This is just a plunger. You know, you plunge it up against the thing and you, you hold her tight so you can mark her. So I'll just do that. Held just there with a, 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 a you know, a thorax or where, no, the thorax is her bum. The middle bit of her body. Not her head, but the middle bit. Stick in there. I don't know what the queen colours are, but I'll just use whatever pen. There you go, I've got her in here. So I'm just going to put some of this candy sugar in there. A little block. I think I'll pop her in the other hive. <laughs> Judging by the way that they're acting, they're not trying to sting. Calmly inspecting. I'm just going to leave her there. This hive has actually started to build wax. I had to scrape this clean. Um, and there was a big bunch hanging, created wax, which is the danger when you use these X that they fill the space with wax before you get to them. Because if it's actually cold, it can still be hot in here and they can start um, building wax. So I think I might take this X away leave them with this which they are eating they're eating this which is good it is a sign that there's something laying in you know this hive hadn't touched it um, and there was no queen um, this hive had just nibbled it um, and there was a queen but there is just you know a pathetic amount of bees um, this hive there was a queen again um, and we, we actually pinched that hive and put it in uh, this hive, the, the queen out of this one put it in that one uh, this one is got about you know five four four and a half frames of bees um, and I I'm gonna hazard a guess two or three of those are brood because they, they just look like they are more active and they are kicking into gear and um, so we'll see what things are like when we get going 
Uh, I really don't want to bother these guys too much. They just have four and a half frames of bees, so this could be one of my most promising hives this year. But I do want to um, merge that hive, which had pretty much nothing onto this. Um, I'm going to try and do the paper method. This is the best paper I've got. So I'm going to cover this as best I can, whack the other one on top, uh, and let them get on with it. Um, uh, and let them jump. There you go. Combined. Well, let's see how they get on. The advantage of marking a queen. There she is. Eggs and larvae in this one. We'll pop her back and let her get on with it. Last hive. This one was the best one going into winter. So let's see how it is, you know. Um, often best hives going into winter can be worst hives in spring because they eat all their food um, or they have varroa problems. I'm just going to show you this high, this frame because it's very interesting from an educational point of view. Um, if you look in here, you've got an egg there next to a larva next to capped. This is what you call a patchy brood. Okay. Now, in a hive like this, um, it really just means probably that the queen is failing in fertility. She was a newly made queen last year. Pop this frame back. I haven't seen Queenie in there. But um, she's doing an okay job. She's kept the numbers of this hive up, but like I say, this was my strongest hive. I expected this hive to be booming, and numbers are okay, but not booming. And actually, if I left this hive as it is, it would probably remain so for the rest of the season. I probably wouldn't get a good amount of honey off of it. I would sit there ponder going, what's happening? Why aren't they getting better? At and the reason that is, is because Queen's fertility is not great. She's actually laying eggs, but what the bees do is they come along and any eggs that are bad, they eat it. Um, and they don't let it develop. Um, so every time you, you, you pull this out, I mean, those, those three frames there just have wall-to-wall -wall eggs. And you think, great, wonderful, lots of eggs. And you put the frame back in, you come back next week and you say, wonderful, lots of eggs. But... A small part, part, a small number of those eggs are actually getting allowed to develop into bees, and um, so it is not a good sign. Hopefully, the bees notice it, and sometimes they they will just raise their own queen, which is called a supersedure. But they don't always, for some reason. Sometimes they're just faithful to their queen, and they'll just keep on going until their numbers dwindle and dwindle and dwindle. Um, I've got queens coming. This hive will be priority to get one of those queens in April. Um, which is in about two or three weeks time. Bees here. Bees like to move up. So if you start by holding it up, then she'll come out. But nice and gentle, so no chucking her out. I think not know what she's doing. She's face palming. What they do when they're rejecting a queen is they actually start to sting. And she's gone. Just at the apiary, um, just getting ready to uh, basically kill an old queen who stopped laying. Um, you can, oh, I've got two right handed gloves. Oh no, no. Um, yeah, so you can actually see, I'll, I'll hopefully in, have a little video of the queen four days ago, which I found um, and marked her. Unfortunately, there was no brood or whatever, and it looked like it actually looked like she was newly mated, but uh, posted it online, and a lot of guys basically say, actually no, it's the opposite. It's an old queen dying, and she's she's her her at the end of her her abdomen uh, where eggs come out. There was basically just a big hole, um, and it's just an old, slightly damaged bee. So I had moved them because of the reduced numbers into this little neck. 
so it should be nice and easy to open up and find her but unfortunately one of the bad things about a queen that's gone off laying is that there's not really brood anywhere so it could be anywhere and um, they usually run around a little bit they've got no area that they're working so they're less focused so you could find them on the first frame the last frame um it's one of the disappointing things how i found her last time was i sifted all the bees through a queen excluder um to reveal the queen um you know who couldn't get through the queen excluder essentially anyways i'll crack on um and uh, I'm just going to kill her and unite the bees into that hive over there, which is doing well. Um, or maybe even this hive here. So we shall see. My boy! <laughs> I'm sitting here. Jarring, jarring. Honey, some, honey. Jarring some more?